Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of Family Moments, where we use really cool object lessons that teach the truth about what matters most. Exactly. And today, we continue our summer series called That's Not Fair, as we teach about the unfairness of life while enjoying some of the fun aspects of the county fair. Yeah, like the food and the rides. I can't wait to see what we're exploring today. Oh, Sadie, you're going to love this episode because it involves something you really enjoy. Gold? No. Silver? No. Cold hard cash? Would you knock it off? I'm talking about the games. The games at the county fair. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty good at those. Oh, really? Yeah, in fact, I almost forgot. I went to a fair last month with a friend and actually won a teddy bear just for you. Oh man, I hope it's one of those humongous bears that you can really- Here you go. That's it? Nothing but the best for you, Dad. Ow, brother. Hey kids, Pastor Robbie here, along with my lovely assistant and wonderful daughter, Sadie. Hello. And today, we're gonna have some fun learning about (laughs) foolishness. Foolishness? I thought we were going to play games. Well, we are, but we're gonna talk about those games first. I do have to admit, as much fun as they are to play, they are almost impossible to win. Well, you're right. In fact, believe it or not, Most of them are actually designed so that you can't win. What? That's not fair. Well, you're right. In fact, let's take a closer look at some of those games like the ring toss. Tossing a plastic ring over the top of a bottle is a lot harder than it seems. That's because the rings barely fit over the top of the bottle. Also, the rings are light and bouncy, making them less likely to settle on the bottle once they hit it. If you don't land the ring directly on the bottle, you are out of luck. Man, that's like a big ripoff. And then there's the balloon dart throw. This is hard to win because the darts are dull and the balloons aren't completely inflated, making them much harder to pop. No wonder I never win at that game. And then there's the basketball toss. I love basketball, but I stink at the fair. Well, that's because the hoops are usually oval shaped instead of circular making them much more difficult to sink a basketball through. Well, that's not fair. Plus, the balls are overinflated and the backboards are really hard, so the balls bounce around almost like super balls. Well, how's anyone supposed to win? Let's just put it this way. You better have a really good swish shot. These things are all rip-offs. Well, you might say that, but we haven't even talked about the milk jug game or the BB gun challenge or the hammer bell. I don't get it. If it's so hard to win, why do people play these games in the first place? Well, because they're hard to resist. Not only that, once you start playing, it's hard to stop. That must be why it takes so many wins to get the huge stuffed animal. Well, you're right. By the time you win that big animal, you may have spent 50 to a hundred dollars. I guess when you look at it that way, it actually seems kind of foolish to even play them. Well, there's nothing wrong with having a little fun at the fair, but you have to know that your chances of winning are pretty slim. So yeah, it's not the wisest way to spend your money. Thankfully, the fair only happens once a year. Well, unfortunately, county fairs aren't the only place people make foolish decisions. In fact, let's take a look at one of the most foolish people in the Bible. Wow, who could that be? It was Solomon's son, Rehoboam. How ironic, since Solomon was considered the wisest person in the Bible. Yeah, at least for part of his life he was. So what did Rehoboam do that was so foolish? Well, when King Solomon died, his son Rehoboam took over. A man named Jeroboam and a few other people from Israel said to him, your father made us work really hard and pay lots of taxes. Please lighten up on us and we will serve you. Rehoboam told him to go away and come back in three days for an answer. Then King Rehoboam consulted the elders who had served his father Solomon during his lifetime. How would you advise me to answer these people, he asked. They replied, 
If today you'll be a servant to them, the people, and serve them and give them favorable answer, they will always be your servants. Then Rehoboam asked some of his buddies what they thought, and they said, don't be kind to your people. Tell them you are greater than your father and you plan on making them work even harder and pay even more taxes. That's crazy. But that's what he did. He ignored the wise advice and instead followed the foolish advice. It ended up being a disaster of a decision and it split the kingdom apart. Wow, that sounds like a lot of young people today. They turn to their friends' advice over their parents and it usually doesn't work out so well. You're right, foolish people tend to make unwise choices over and over again. And it reminds me of Proverbs 26, 11, where it says, as a dog returns to his vomit, so a fool repeats their folly. Disgusting. Why do dogs do that? Eat their puke. Well, it is pretty crazy. They throw up and then they re-eat the very thing that made them throw up in the first place. That does sound pretty foolish. But that's what fools do. They refuse to listen to wisdom and they fail to respect God. Instead, they do what they want to do. Let me demonstrate this for you with a little object lesson I like to call the barking dog. And I call it the barking dog because that's what it sounds like. And it's a good reminder for us that fools are like dogs that return to their vomit. This experiment will show you that if you play with fire, you eventually get burned. We'll take this six gallon jug and pretend it's your life. Now you're supposed to fill your life up with water because that's what this jug is made for. And as a Christ follower, you want to fill it with the living water or with Jesus. How do we do that? Well, by reading your Bible, listening to wise people, and making wise choices. If you do that, when fire comes your way, it doesn't stick around very long because what happens to fire when it's near water? Right, it goes out. But let's pretend that you aren't making wise decisions. You're not filling your life with the living water, but instead, you're dabbling with foolish choices. Like what? Well, like instead of studying for a big test, you decide to play video games all evening. Well, that's not very wise. So instead of filling your life with water, we're going to pour just a little rubbing alcohol inside, which represents foolish choices. Yeah, that's a lot different than water. Or maybe instead of changing the channel when an inappropriate show comes on, you keep watching because it's not that big of a deal. Well, that's not very smart either. You keep making all kinds of foolish choices. And when you consistently make unwise choices, eventually it comes back to haunt you. Uh-oh. Let's take this rag and wipe off the inside neck of the bottle for this experiment to work. And then we'll take this lighter and light the inside and see what happens. dog. It sounded just like a dog. And so while it may look and sound kind of cool, it's not really what this container was made for, is it? No, it's made to hold water. Now, would you like to have a little drink from this container? No way. I'd rather have pure, clean water. And that's exactly what God wants for our lives. And the best way to do that is by filling ourselves with Jesus by reading God's word, listening to wise people, and making wise choices. Making wise choices is a beautiful thing. So Sadie, what did you learn today? I learned that making foolish choices is like a dog that returns to its vomit. And just like the biking dog experiment, things don't usually end well. Exactly. And the best way to make wise choices is by filling ourselves up with Jesus. Very good. Now, I did take the time when we were at the fair to separate from you for just a little while so I could actually win a teddy bear for you that's a little bit bigger than the one you gave me. Here. Thanks. That's funny. I did the exact same thing. I'll be right back. What? Where are you going? What in the world? <laughs> Barely made it. We'll see you around. Ah! 
Today's episode is sponsored by Matt the Carpet Guy. Located in Delaware, for more than 16 years, they have offered the highest quality flooring product and installation services in the mid-Atlantic region. They are renowned for their professional work and their competitive prices. And when it comes to flooring, trust me, Matt and his team have got you covered. And you can find out more about Matt the Carpet Guy by checking out their website or by clicking the link in the description below. And if you'd like to find out more about possibly sponsoring an episode or a series of Family Moment episodes, just drop us an email at contact at familymomentsfun.com. We would love to have you partner with us as we teach the truth about what matters most.